Word of God. Last Sunday, I spoke to you, and you may bring up the slide on the subject, get to the gate first. We established get to the gate first last week, but today I'm speaking on the subject, get to the gate fast. I established from the word of God last week that for your life to change, you have to go through a gate. And it's one thing to get to a gate, it's another thing to get through the gate. And our subject was Peter. And here you are, I don't know what gate you need to go through to get to your next level. But you, instead of just talking about getting to the gate first, we need to get to gate fast. I'm going to take that reading again very quickly. Um, Acts 12, verses 6 to 11. And I want multimedia to please New King James Version. My time is short this morning. The Bible says, And when Herod was about to bring Peter out, that night Peter was sleeping for whatever reason, I don't know. And he was bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter. He hit Peter. He slapped Peter on the side. He didn't touch Peter. He struck him. And raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Guard yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put, your gar put on your garment and follow me. Follow me. Stay with me. That's the only way to the gate. That's the only way to get through the gate. And so he went out and followed him. Thank God. I wish everybody did that. But he did not know that what was done by the angel was real. It was too good to be true. Thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard, Post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city of breakthrough which miraculously opened to them of its own accord and they went out and went down one street and immediately after that the angel departed from him i'm going to stop there this morning i speak to you beyond getting to the gate first don't get frustrated if things haven't changed. Sometimes it's not enough for the chains to fall off. Sometimes it's not enough for you to get through the first difficulty or the second hurdle. Generally in life, if your, if your position in life, if your, if your level is going to change, you have to get to a gate and you have to get through the gates. Don't just go to the gate, get through the gate. And in this case, when they did, everything changed. But God sent an angel. Father, this morning, beyond getting to the gate first, because we have lost a lot of time. Many of us are not where we're supposed to be. Father, teach us how to get to the gate fast. And go through the gate fast. That way we can catch up and overtake. Thank you for the word of clarity and instruction today. That will transform our lives to the glory of your name. Blessed be God, in Jesus' name we pray. As you sit down, help me tell your neighbor, get to the gate fast. You need to get to that gate fast. I said to you this morning, there is one thing to get to the gate, it's another thing to get through the gate. And there's no point getting frustrated in life when you have not gotten to the gate, you want something beyond the gate. The gate is designed to keep people out of something and it's usually very good. And so if you don't get to the gate, stop whining, stop murmuring. You haven't followed the instruction of the Lord that will take you to the gate and then get you through the gate. And it is one thing to break through. And breakthrough is not the same. Uh, no, no. It's one thing to break out. And it's not the same as breakthrough. He broke out of jail, but until he went through the gate, he did not break through. A lot of us have broken out, but we have not broken through. It is one thing to break out 
of jail is another thing to break through into the city of your desire. And there's a process to it. This morning I'm speaking beyond getting to the gate first. I'm talking about getting to the gate fast. And the, the, the equation is all very simple. You get to the gate as fast as you obey the instructions of the angel that was sent to you. If you are slow in carrying out the instruction, it will take as long as, you, as it took for you to obey for you to get there. And obedience is not something a lot of Christians take seriously. Let me ask you if Peter, when he woke him up, if he was sluggish to get up. You know, some of you, it takes 15 minutes for your spouse to wake you up. Can I talk about that a bit? Baby, wake up. Who is that? What's this? Cover cloth. Some people even take pillow. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Then they roll away from you to the other side. Then the angel comes to the other side and says, wake up, wake up, wake up. So what is it now? Okay, give me five minutes. Some people get up. We call it Iroro. Iroba. Oh, no, 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 no. Hit the wall and then like, sit down, continue sleeping. 20 minutes has passed. The angel said, Get up quickly. Some of us don't know anything called quick when it comes to obedience. If you're going to obey, you are like a diesel engine, it takes forever for you to obey. To get to the gate fast is determined by how fast you respond to the instruction of the angel. How fast Peter obeyed the angel's instruction will determine how fast he gets to the gate and be able to get through the gates from breakout to breakthrough. Let me read the same scripture for you. The Living Bible. Change to the Living Bible. For, I want to read verses 7 and 8. The Living Bible. When suddenly there was a light in the cell, and the angel of the Lord, sent by who? Did Peter need an angel or not? He was in the trouble of his life. James had been killed. Somebody had been in the situation like there was and ended up in jail. Because what they would say is she panned it with those people. How come they got the email right? Uh, you think it's just basic? No, it's a criminal offense. And you are innocent. Peter was innocent, but he was in jail. You know, when you're in a bad place, God will send an angel to you. But what happens, a lot of us don't respond to the angel. The Bible says, suddenly, may we experience the suddenly that we need in Jesus' name. The angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord stood beside Peter. Hey, how would an angel be in your house and your situation has not changed? The angel knew Peter was a deep sleeper. The angel knew that Peter would do irono. The angel thought Peter may sleepwalk. And time was short. And the Bible says the angel did what? He slapped him. The reaction of your angel to you is determined by your character. Please don't tell the angel, why are you slapping me? Why did you not touch me? Your history shows that you respond to only slaps. The King James Bible said he struck him. Do you know when we say the Lord should strike our enemy, you think it's a touch? Another translation says he hit him. I like this one. So he slapped him on the side. He didn't slap him on the hand. He slapped him on the side. Tom! Because the angel is more interested in getting you to the gate and through the gate. And the angel is not necessarily the one that has wings. The, 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 the word of the Lord to the angels of the seven churches was talking to the pastors of the church. A translation says, to the pastor of the church in Simeon. 
I will respond to you. I will deal with you according to your characteristic traits. There's an urgency. He struck him on the side. He slapped him on the side to what? To awaken him. Baby, the Lord is trying to awaken you. You are opening your eyes, but you are sleeping on duty. It's like those cars that have that light. The light will be on, but the engine is off. You will just see the thing open like this. It doesn't mean the engine is running. Just because you open your eyes doesn't mean you're awake. And said, quick. What does quick mean? What does it quick mean? Fast. There, listen, when destiny is knocking, it's not the time to take your time. Some people tell me, you know what? I cannot take my time when I do things. Kilo day. Turn it down quick. I said, turn it down quick. Fast. You know, some people tell me that, Pastor, that's how I am. I, 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 I cannot take my time to do everything. Show you what I miss, boss. Eh? You will miss the plane that's going to take you to the city of your desire. Because there is a time for everything. The angel meant business, but Peter didn't mean business. I mean business this morning. I don't know how many of you mean business this morning. Can I see your hand up? So I mean business. And that's why I changed the subject from get to the gate first to get to the gate fast. Is there anybody here that wants a change for better fast? So Lord, I receive it. He said quick. Get up. Why would I say quick if Peter was quick to get up? Some of us are not quick to repent. We're not quick to respond to Pastor Etefia. It's for you to understand the principles of prosperity of this kingdom is different from the one in the world. Some people are still booting. Some people have already started prospering. You're hearing testimonies here. You're still, pros you're still processing Joko Bay. The plane is on the runway. Get up! And the chains fell off his wrist. The first thing is... To every instruction that was given that he responded, you will see a corresponding reaction. When he got up, the chains fell off. Don't expect something to change when your obedience is zero. You know, some people have prayed and they're waiting for God in their bathrobe, wearing their bathroom slippers until God comes. Listen, the first obedience will show you that God recognizes that you are changing. Something changed. The wrist uh, shackles fell off. This morning, as you respond, something will fall off right here in the name of Jesus. Go, go to the next verse, verse 8. Then the angel, when, the, when he obeyed the first instruction, you notice that he didn't give a flurry of instruction. One, no, 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 no. He gave five instructions. Bah, quick, get up. As he got up, the chains fell off. The Bible says then, which means after the first obedience. The angel now said to him, get dressed. If you don't get up, I will never tell you to get dressed. Listen, church, obedience is not to make God be. And it's not to make your pastor think he's better than you. You are the one that needs help. The angel is good. He said, get dressed and put on your shoes. The next three words are very important. And he did. How many of you can I say that about? And you did what you were told to do. Then after he did, read the next word. The word now means in consequence of all that was done. Now that you have had enough sense to wake up, that have had enough sense to obey, to put on your clothes, now put on your coat. Hey, I wish you would hear me. Step by step obedience. Then follow me. He didn't say let's go. You see, a lot of people think that your leaders, in any capacity, God is a God of order. In your job, your boss is your boss. In your home, the husband is the head of the house. In the church, the pastor is the man of God. 
Do you understand? He didn't say, let's go. No, he said, follow me. You know, the word follow me is so offensive to a lot of people. Anything they do, they don't like to follow. It's the scourge of the New Testament believer. The angel, they say, let's go. Follow me. Which means, I am in front. The pace I am going is the one you follow. Let me ask you, if Peter overtook the angel, will the gate open to him? He said, follow me. And the next sequence of events, uh, he said, follow me. Read the next last three words. The angel did what? No, no, it said the angel suggested or they discussed or they negotiated the angel ordered can I tell you something if your deliverance is that important to you if you want to get to the gate fast stop saying you are not ready to follow anybody this kingdom does not work like that are you there when I said let's have worship Wednesday some people say I'm not coming whatever I say I'm going to do my own thing can you understand what is happening the angel was there because of Peter does Peter know that I don't know but Peter followed the rest is history they got to the gate they went through the first guard hut everybody's asleep if Peter walked by himself will they be asleep and just because they are asleep which is what a lot of us do you have seen the chains fell off you don't even question why you saw the guards asleep you now feel oh God, they go your own I they go my own in fact I know it's shorter court he didn't say let's go he said follow me and they got to the gate and I'm sure Peter is thinking, follow you, follow for you. Okay, let me see what you're going to do. You know what? He didn't have to do anything. Because he's on assignment from God. The gate opened of its own accord. I brought you to a word on Sunday about how Moses was appointed to God to lead the children of Israel out of captivity. You see, when God chooses somebody, listen, it's not your business to say, why did you choose this person? And I read to you in the book of Acts. I just don't have the time. Get the tape. Go to SoundCloud. And it says, because when Moses went there one day, an Egyptian was beating a, uh, an, an Israelite, and he hit the man. The man died. He thought they would understand that he was trying to deliver them. The next time, two Israelis were fighting. One said, do you want to kill me like that man? He was saying about that was an Egyptian. It was even an accident. They spread the information. The angel ran away. For the next 40 years, they were on their knees praying on something that probably will have happened sooner than that. The Bible says, by the mercy of God, God brought the angel back 40 years after. He said, the same Moses that they said, who made you a info, was the one that led them out. Let me tell you how it works. The gate and the Red Sea are the same. When they got to the Red Sea, Mo Pharaoh knew that the only way of escape for my, my slaves is through the Red Sea, and the Red Sea doesn't respect anybody. So when they left, his side pursued them. He knew they'll be stuck there. He thought that was the end. See, it depends on who is with you. When the angel Moses started praying about the Red Sea, God said, no, 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 when I appoint you on a job, I give you the power. That power is your hand. Lift the power. The gate to escape to the promised land opened of his own accord. Supposing Israel said they want to do it their own way. Supposing Israel said, listen, when the angel woke Peter up, some of us ignite too quickly. See, wait him. Why, 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 why slap me like that and start fighting the angel? What did they do? You, uh -huh. So, I beg, I, okay, I'm not interested. See, eh? focus on your deliverance. Oh. Focus on what you need. Oh. 
Don't spend your energy judging your angel. That's a waste of your time. Follow. They judge Moses. Hey this, hey that. The same Moses. Let them through. My prayer is if anybody has left their angel, may the Lord deliver you. May the Lord bring the angel back. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to close quickly. When, when the angel woke Peter up, he woke him with a note of urgency in his voice. He says, quick, get up. The angel knows that he needs to get there fast. If day breaks, Herod was going to bring him out. It wasn't long before daybreak. When the word of the Lord comes to you, check the note of urgency look at how old you are look at where you are look at what you miss look at what god needs to do in your in your life let that let you know that it's not the time to be sleepwalking it's not the time to be arguing about the process there was a note of urgency in the angel's voice there was a note of alacrity there was a call for alertness a need for speed so that we get there fast May we not get there when it doesn't matter anymore. Let me talk about our personal timetables. This is a very practical teaching. As far as Peter was concerned, what was on the timetable was sleep. But what was on God's timetable was deliverance. Are you willing to submit your timetable to God's timetable of blessing? You know, when some people are sleeping, they say, no, 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 no. I am sleeping forget it. If some people want to go on holiday and I say, you know what? I don't think it's time. Just like some people plan to go to South Africa. Hmm? Imagine I said, I know you bought the ticket. Just let's slow things down. Whilst they're in the air, the place ignites. The plane can't turn back. It's going to land there. Do you follow me? What is on your timetable? For like I mean, timetable was on your timetable of you and your siblings was that this man we're going to deal with him. There is more of us, the children, and there's only one of you. We're going to make you miserable the way you made us miserable. That was all on the timetable. She sat down here. She would never have heard that word if you didn't come for midweek service. You will have carried out your agenda and it will be a foolish agenda because that's not what was on the timetable of God. But I like what she did. Why she was crying that day is that, you see, when you submit your timetable for God's timetable, it's painful. When you have determined to do something, pay somebody back, and God says, it's not the time. I have something better for you. When you drop it, if you don't drop a tear, I don't trust your obedience. It costs you something. She was crying that day. Are you there? The sleep timetable had to give way to action timetable. Will you find out what God is saying and stop hearing what you are saying? He, he was talking about relaxed timetable. God was talking about speed. It's time for speed on the timetable. It's time for change. It's time for repentance. God is saying many things. Look, look at the series of sermons. Because of this, God lifted up Jesus. Do you have a because? Forgiveness. We spoke about forgiveness. Somebody tell me. What other word? It was just back to back. Get into the gates now. That's what is on the timetable. You know, this thing of insisting, I will draw my timetable, nothing anybody can do. It is the limit of foolishness. Bible says there are many timetables in the heart of the sons of men. It is only that of the Lord that will stand. Don't spend 10 years of your life and it, it fizzles out in smoke because you were following the wrong timetable. God is letting you know there's a time for everything. I want to close with this scripture. The NIV, Ephesians 5, verse 14. To 17 i start from the b part of ephesians 5 14 niv it says wake up O sleeper
What version are you looking at? Uh -huh. Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. The next verse says, be very careful. Then how you live. When you wake up, be very careful not to be living by how you slept. Sure. How you live. Not as unwise, but wise. The next line says, the next verse says, making the most, come on now, of every opportunity. When you wake up and an angel is speaking to you, it is an opportunity. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The verse before this in the Message Bible says, Use your head. These are desperate times. Verse 15. These are desperate times. Verse 16, Rora. Use your head. These are desperate times. Was Peter in desperate times or not? Wake up, O oh sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful. Then how you live now. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making what? The most of every opportunity. If Peter missed that opportunity, is there likely to be another one? Everyone that has missed a critical opportunity, let me use this time to pray. May the Lord bring it back again in Jesus' name. I want you to stand to your feet. It's all about you getting to the gates of the city of your dreams and aspiration and getting through that gate and getting there fast. Why don't you lift up your hand to God and say, Lord, this message is for me. Why don't you talk to God honestly? Why don't you talk to God about your calendar and your timetable? Why don't you talk to God about your characteristic trait of resisting the word to change? says use your head these are desperate times you need to make the most of every opportunity destiny is waiting for you the chain that you want is waiting for you will you be instructed by the angel at your age if you don't get there soon <laughs> it probably won't matter anymore we need to get there fast Pray, say, Lord, I need to get there fast. My children need to get there fast. Financially, I need to get there fast. Time is not on my side. This is not the time to be looking around. This is your moment. Talk to God and say, Lord, please, this message is for me. Instruct me, oh God. If I abandoned the angel God said to me, Lord, help me to reestablish contacts. Be careful then how you live these days. You need to make the most of every opportunity because the days are desperate days. May frustration not be the permanent experience of our lives. Thinking about the gates looking at the gates and not knowing how to get through the gates help me hold somebody's hand i'm desperate now i'm desperate help me hold somebody pray for the person that lord help this person get to the gate and through the gate fast some people this week they have to get to the gate and get through this gate some people it will take the end of the month but lord let it be fast The testimony that they need, let them access it fast. The family boost that they need, let, let them get there fast. The financial turn around, Lord, let them get there fast. Pray for the pastor, say every timetable that you're holding on to, that is not of the Lord, may the Lord help you to drop the timetable. 
Bible says, be wise to know what the will of the Lord is for now. Father, help us. May the gate open unto us and not shut us out anymore. Thank you, Lord, that we will get there and get there fast. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Have you been blessed this morning? Help me bless the name of the Lord. We will get there fast in Jesus' name. All right, I want you to be fast to sit down because my time is gone.